HBO Max is on fire. I'm sorry, I meant HBO Max is burning to the ground before our very eyes. Deadline reports that HBO Max is pulling a lot of titles from its service, and we can look through here, Aquaman, Close Enough, Dodo, Elliot from Earth, The Fungies, Infinity Train, Mau Mau, Mighty Magiswords, OKKO, OK Pac-Man, Squish, Summer Camp Island, Tig and Seek, Uncle Grandpa, Victor and Valentino, the Yabba Dabba Dinosaurs, and so many more. Quote, as we work towards bringing our content catalogs together under one platform, we will be making changes to the content offering available on both HBO Max and Discovery Plus. That will include the removal of some content from both platforms, the company said. At the same time, we're already starting to bring our content catalogs together, like the launch of the new CNN Originals Hub on Discovery Plus and a curated collection of Magnolia Network content coming soon to HBO Max. Mind you, this is in addition to about two weeks ago when I made a community post talking about the Batgirl movie and the Scoob movie being cancelled and about 70% of HBO Max's development staff being laid off. So why is all this happening so soon? So as a few sources report, Warner Bros and Discovery are having a merger, being named Warner Bros Discovery Inc, quite unique, and will fuse their services together in approximately 2023. And to those savvy, this comes five to six years after telecommunications giant AT&T would have merged with Time Warner, as it was called at the time, now it's called Warner Media. And to get to the point, it has been reported that the merger was not viewed as a success on AT&T's end. Quote, in many quarters, the news is being seen as AT&T admitting defeat after an ill-fated attempt to bring content and distribution together. Earlier this year, AT&T also struck a deal to carve out its satellite businesses, DirecTV, at a significant loss from the 2015 purchase price. Similarly, it would go on to say, and another telecom giant, Verizon, threw in a towel on its content efforts as well, agreeing to sell Yahoo and AOL for $5 billion. So basically, to lick their wounds of the whole mess, the spinoff of Time Warner and AT&T means that AT&T is now out of the entertainment arms race. However, it was reported that AT&T would spin off Time Warner and Discovery to create this standalone media company, which apparently starts out $55 billion in debt and will be spending more more to compete. And I want you to keep that number in mind for later. Quote, we are now in a world where relevance and future success will be tied to the greater scale and growth globally, Stanky said in a memo to Warner Media staffers. To be one of the best global media companies requires not only broad and deep creative assets, but an investor base and access to capital to make it happen. The decision to combine Warner Media with Discovery is rooted in this conclusion. It was stated that Discover and Warner currently spend a total of 20 billion billion dollars a year on content and that Netflix plans to spend 17 billion on content this year. So basically that they're spending more. So to put it in simpler terms, it didn't work out for AT&T, but it may work out if Discovery and Warner Media basically create their own fusion together and become a media powerhouse together away from AT&T. Fusion is just a cheap tactic to make weak gems stronger. Variety writes, at the end of the day, putting all the content together was the only way we saw to make this a viable business. Bringing HBO Max and Discovery Plus together is aimed at cutting churn so that there's something for everyone in the household, he said. So going back to the $55 billion in debt, and I know no one came for a math lesson, but when you look at the earning reports, a lot of the loss Warner Bros. Discovery Inc. had was because, and I do not know how to pronounce this word, amortization of intangibles, restructuring and other charges, and transaction integration expenses. Now, I bring this up because this is probably the reason why a lot of shows and assets were either canceled or written off earlier this year. Now, in an article from Slashfilm, the company has written off $825 million off in the second quarter of this year, and if you don't know, the assets that can be concluded as a tax write-off includes content impairments, the article stated, for projects that were already in production and development write-offs for titles that were in early stages. Mind you, this 
this doesn't appear to count Scoob and Batgirl, but obviously I'm an outsider so I don't know. But this is all to say that the new company service is financially in a hole, despite being number one in so many areas, and decides to cut off shows that weren't performing well to focus on what they deem quality shows that will help the new streaming service to be quote, profitable in the United States in 2024, and for its global streaming segment to generate $1 billion in revenue by 2025. This is most likely what led into all of the shows being taken away because someone or some people have deemed it not to be worth it in the grand scheme of this media arms race. My good friend Crit has assembled this list here that I'll have on the screen, and apart from a few shows, every show is still available for digital purchase, which means that it's not completely off the internet, it's just that a lot of shows aren't available to stream. Shows like Dodo and Odo, the former name being ironic here, do not appear to have any other way to view them and thus are extinct, or as we would label it, lost media. Leah Uptuned Rins, a cool creator that you guys should check out, tweeted out, fun fact, the only way to watch book 3 and 4 of Infinity Train will now be through digital purchase on Amazon or Piracy, because unlike books 1 and 2, 3 and 4 do not have DVDs, and a lot of these other shows don't have any at all and just became lost media. Make it make sense. The merger doesn't seem to affect Craig of the Creek, Teen Titans Go, Wee Baby Bears, or the Gumball Movie, which are all current shows and projects that Cartoon Network has. And I suppose, now that I've dumped a lot of news on you, my commentary on this, my biggest question, how much money does it cost to keep these shows on a streaming service? Now, I'm not a business expert or even a streaming service expert, but it does appear that the only cost these things should have, just off the top of my head, is that these shows would have to be in a server to be reached at anyone's home and devices. When you get HBO Max, when you subscribe to HBO Max, you are not downloading terabytes of shows. You're purchasing the access to these shows, which are on servers and I wouldn't imagine it's to cost that much. And to keep the train rolling on bad news, it appears that this streaming service might be a higher price than one would pay for either or, and that means for a lot of us, at least the ones who pay, we will be paying for a bunch of discovery content that we didn't ask for. Now some creators have spoken out about this, such as Julia Pot of Summer Camp Island, quote, we worked for five years to make a hundred episodes of animation. We worked late into the night, we let ourselves go, we were a family of hardworking artists who wanted wanted to make something beautiful, and HBO Max just pulled them all, like we were nothing. Animation is not nothing, and we worked through the pandemic to make 20 linear episodes that are our most beautiful work yet. I cannot wait for you to see them. You will see them. I will not rest. And what she's referring to here is season 5 of Summer Camp Island potentially not being released and thus becoming lost media. Ian Jones Cordy of OKKO Creation had a more comical take. They were moving Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures. When you think about it, we never stood a chance. However, I'm sure that a lot of creators and a lot of staff of these shows are affected by this major loss. So basically, as far as I know, this comes down to AT&T not seeing streaming and entertainment as a long-term valuable investment, which led into HBO Max and Discovery wanting to compete with Netflix, Amazon, and Disney, which led to a giant initial financial loss because of merger fees and thus the company being in debt, which led into the ruthless cut of shows, which when you think about how a lot of companies view animation, I'd imagine they didn't think too much about removing a bunch of kids shows because apparently kids don't care. You don't need me to tell you that these companies don't and never did care about the preservation of these shows and I wish there was a bigger point to attach hope to but as it stands as I said before things are looking spooky for Cartoon Network and I don't know exactly where I would shift my attention to if the entire thing just will happen to just dissolve into a category on a streaming service. Getting back to Julia Potts tweets she had this reply here I think all artists need to come together and figure out how we can make it in this world without having to rely on big corporations. And that's why I'm excited to see things like Hell of a Boss manage, because if one can make it, a lot more can make it. And I'm literally on my knees begging for more sustainable independent IP. But I suppose for now, we have to wait for more info. I want to give a special thanks to my friend Critical Nerd who also makes videos. He made one on the rise of the TMNT movie with more to come. And let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And until next time, take care. Alpha out.